I'm here today with Dr. Robert Haddad, who's an expert on head and neck cancer. Robert, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. How are things in, in regards to prognosis now for people with head and neck cancer as opposed to, let's say, 15 or 20 years from mm -hmm. ago? The prognosis for this cancer is excellent, and uh, the vast majority of the patients that uh, are diagnosed with head and neck cancer are cured. Uh, depends on where, uh, what institution you're looking at, the numbers of uh, patients cured is, is, is high. And uh, I would say more than 80 to 85 percent of patients who present with stage four locally advanced disease are cured. Uh, so the expectation when I see a patient now in the clinic with this disease is that really uh, the intent of the treatment is cure and we are f now faced with a large population of survivors and we are now more and more uh, dealing with survivorship issues. What are some of the short-term problems that, that people face who've been treated for head and neck cancer? So, so the, 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 this is a treatment uh, that uh, obviously in head and neck cancer, a major focus for us is, is organ preservation, is, is trying to preserve function. Uh, as you all know, head and neck cancer, because of the location you are treating, patients are faced with swallowing issues, mm -hmm. uh, with pain issues, uh, dry mouth, uh, and, uh, and uh, depression is very common. So uh, I think we can divide those side effects into the ones that occur during treatment as patients are going through chemotherapy and radiation, and those that happen long term at the end of treatment. So the, the major issues we see at, uh, on the long term, on the intermediate and long term effects are, uh, number one, we, we see significant dental problems. Uh, uh, as you all know, when we give radiation treatment, uh, saliva is affected. Patients are not making as much saliva as they did before, and that affects dental health. And dental hygiene is very important for patients treated for head and neck cancer. Uh, so dental issues are significant and, um, uh, uh, and prominent. We also see significant swallowing problems with our patients, even though after the feeding tube is, is removed. Uh, patients cannot tolerate all types of food and all types of consistencies, uh, and that is a significant issue on the long term. We also see significant pain issues on the long term that have to do with the scarring and fibrosis that takes place after treating for head and neck cancer. And patients often have mobility issues with their necks, uh, and, uh, and that sometimes require physical therapy, lymphedema therapy, and those are important part of the long-term recovery for patients. A couple questions related to that. One is going to be how, how our medical field, how oncology may be trying to reduce some of those side effects. And then I also want to move on to what can, what can people do for themselves? Right. So one of the uh, technologies we are using in the clinic right now with radiation therapy is IMRT. Uh, and that's intensity modulated radiation therapy. And that's a better way of delivering radiation therapy that allow the radiation oncologist to spare normal tissue. So it allows you to be better focused when you give radiation treatment. And by doing that, you can spare some of the normal tissue and decrease the risk of severe dry mouth. So instead of having to radiate both sides of the neck, you can now radiate one side of the neck and spare the other side. By doing that, you can decrease how much dry mouth you see. Also, it's very important that the patient is proactive during treatment and after treatment. The amount of uh, exercise they do is very important, undergoing physical therapy, rehab therapy, to really improve flexibility of the neck. Doing swallowing exercises are very important. And part of my clinic now, I have two speech and swallow therapists who are with me in the clinic seeing patients mm -hmm. and seeing the patients throughout the treatment and after the treatment. Uh, and it's very important that patients undergo speech and swallow therapy as they go through treatment. Nutrition is key. Many patients, unfortunately, are not able to eat all types of food, and they find themselves going toward foods that are easy to swallow, which can be often junk food, which means they end up with long-term cardiovascular issues that now we are having to address, because as you have to change your diet, and if you're not able to eat vegetables or fruits because they, they are solid food that you cannot swallow, you might find yourself going toward things like ice cream, for example, which is easier to swallow. And by doing that, you increase your cardiovascular risk. So it's very important to have a comprehensive approach to long-term effects. And do people get better? From the experience we've seen in treating this cancer, the expectation is that we will get patients as close to baseline uh, as possible. And the majority of patients will get back to a baseline that is very close to where they started. They might have some degree of dry mouth. They might not like to drink a, a, a soda. 
uh, because it might, uh, it might burn. Uh, but the majority of them will have a normal life. They can go out to a restaurant and eat with their family and friends. Uh, we strongly advise patients who have this type of cancer uh, not to smoke and not to drink. Uh, smoking and drinking are bad and are the reasons why these cancers occur. So a uh, part of the education we've been discussing, the, 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 the talking to patients about modifying their risks is very important. So smoking cessation for them and their families. They should not be in an environment where people around them are smoking. So that's a discussion that happens with the family, with the spouse, with the uh, significant other, to talk to everybody about avoiding smoking. Avoiding alcohol, patients having neck cancer should not be drinking alcohol on a regular basis, and that's very important. Um, so there's really uh, education, education, education is key uh, to go through this process. Well, I have to say it was a wonderful summary of the, uh, really hitting so many of the key points about survivorship, and, and thankfully the really improving, wonderfully improving prognosis for people with head and neck cancer. So thank you. Thank you very much.